Hey, welcome to the Tech Capital World. My name is Bobby Davis here in the beautiful state of North Carolina. Got some really cool music, startup music here, Kevin. Feeling great. You like that today? <laughs> yeah. Still playing so, in the background. Left it on today. Okay, cool. <laughs> and so, like, you know, we, we talked real briefly about what we want to talk about. I thought I would make an announcement, like, and I know I didn't I didn't I didn't run this ah, by you, so like, that's it. okay though. Go for but it. um I don't talk about me normally, but like this has been such a traumatic changed and uh, something happened and you know what i'm going to talk about yesterday um i don't know a lot of people know this but i lost vision in my left eye so i couldn't see it was just like this big blurry thing and um so now i've got a contact that fixed my vision and now i'm at 20 30 vision which is really really great you know now so i don't have this this, this is a th like this. thing you have to fit in your eye isn't it like every yeah day. yeah it's like it's, it's not like, like a, it's not like a contact. regular contact like a hard contact right yeah. right Right. Yeah. And so I had a cornea that was just like shaped like a football like this. And it was on your eye like that. And you couldn't see through it. And this flattens it out. And um, now I can see it was amazing. The biggest <laughs> difference in it, you know, like, and so I thought I was going to, have to go through a cornea transplant. And so, you know, that was kind of one of the things, but like, I'm um, really excited about it. So anyway, so now, so now you can actually yeah. see, which is awesome. I can see, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it's code, coded with one eye. So, you know, yeah, try that, so everybody. Two. Try yeah. doing that. Try, try, try cutting with one <laughs> eye. It, it, it ruins yeah. your depth perception. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that's, that's awesome. It's awesome that you, you're back to seeing again. Yeah. Um, it's kind of good. I just want to say, so, uh, Paul dropped. Oh, Paul's still here, actually. I thought he was going to go back to work. Um, All right. Cool, Paul. But he's, uh, he's here now. Look. Um, he says, I don't know. Put his comments here. So just, Dropping by to say hey. So I dropped by to his stream over the weekend. I think it was over the weekend. Okay. Over the weekend. Whatever that, uh, just to, to say hey. I saw he was live streaming. So I jumped in okay. on his live hey, stream. Paul, what's so, up? Uh, welcome to ours. This um, one with the hot pink motif. I liked it. He, I remember when he built that out and he was on Twitter, like he had several different cards. Yeah. And I told him that I like the hot pink. I said, it's hard to do, but like the way he did, I think looks good. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. It's one of those things yeah. like we have the same thing with the orange, right? It's like, you've got to, yeah. you've got to use it sparingly. Like you've you yeah. got to match it with at mm -hmm. least a dark and a light color palette. And then you got to like, you know, it's that proper color. Yeah. I think it works. So yeah. yeah, he's working at his dream company. Gives yeah, us some cred. Cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So Paul's working at Strappy work, now. Though. We haven't, I don't really check that out. Strappy. That, yeah, I know. He's, um, yeah, Strappy's yeah, cool. Yeah. I, I haven't looked at it yet, but. Sorry, well, I know we should be like, yes, it's, you know, <laughs> I haven't looked at it yet, so, but it looks pretty cool. Like, I, it's, yeah. it's something, something worth checking out. So, yeah, that's awesome. I know Paul got yeah. that through, like, you know, through being out here, through social media, through having a YouTube presence, through, like, you know, being, yeah. uh, being a nice guy. It, it helps. Yeah. So, it does. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's definitely cool. So, I love that he's working somewhere that he loves working. It's, yeah, it's like exactly. Killer. Killer. What everybody wants, right? So, um what else was i gonna say oh look i noticed i noticed oh you, you have yours there you have your 
a new. I don't have. Don't have. Uh, you, you know, you're gonna laugh, but uh, you have the other I one. I was it. just, I was just wondering. I got the wrong just, one. The one that doesn't have one. it on there. <laughs> yeah, I have the shiny new CF one. Look, we got new. We got new yeah. Yeti mugs. Look, and shiny new yeah. Yeti. Got a funny. So, yeah, I'm drinking from mine today. I came and picked it up at the weekend. I'm drinking our tea. So I have water today. Okay. Tea, but yeah. Um, speaking of swag, too, just a, a little, yeah. a, a little tease. Um, a little tease. New Some changes coming. Uh, new store coming next week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So new store which has swag. It has um, book links in it. It has course links in it. It has everything. We we, we have and a I unified the, store. And I do think it's the coolest mouth mouse pad ever invented. So. <laughs> okay. I know I'm overselling it, but like yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, we're there's also a swag to come in there's also a new hot t-shirt in there i think that you guys are gonna like i mean like um yeah yeah so I we're gonna we're, like. gonna we're gonna launch the new store next week um probably monday i think yeah um we'll do a natural launch and we'll do a we're gonna do a competition as well to give away a shirt so yeah. we're gonna put it out cool. on twitter so if you don't follow us on twitter already follow at coda foundry on twitter and you'll see it there um and then you can retweet it and then if you retweet it you're gonna get in for the competition to win the t-shirt so yeah um and yeah. we'll get your size and everything afterwards whoever wins it so um shane there is a hat on there oh, wait, just there's a hat it's, you it's can buy a hat shane yeah we got some pretty cool uh new design stuff too we've been working on so yeah that's going to be uh, next week and we actually did this yes. thing with shopify too which first time we've used it like yeah. it's cool it's cool. We had yeah. kind of fun doing it. Cool. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Like, oh, I can do a lot with this stuff. Um, I so remember we when we had our first meeting, and I, I said, "Hey, let's let's stand up a Shopify store." And I mean, by like, we, I mean you. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Like, let's jump into it. But I think yeah, we had right. some reservations first. How hard is this going to be? How difficult is it? Yeah. And then you came back a day later, and you're like, "Dude, this is pretty cool." Look, I was at like, that. "Hey, look, we're we, we, exactly." Like, "Hey, look, we got a store. We got the basics of a store, anyway." <laughs> yeah. So um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, so next week but, um, it's all it looks, kind of ready to go. So we just we want to wait until yeah. um, sat there for a for a minute, and then it'll uh, make sure everything's set up on it from a financial standpoint, and then it'll be ready to roll. So yeah, we have some yeah. cool new design shirts, some cool new hats, um, hoodies on there. Like swag wise, there's a mouse pad on there. Um, uh, you can uh, get the book on there too. We're thinking about putting up maybe the um, uh, signed version of the book at some point too. So yeah, that's we can do whatever we want now. So like so, we can do whatever yeah, we want. Yeah, now we can say whatever. Yeah, we can yes. do fulfillment. We can do anything through it. So it's kind of cool. Very yeah. cool. It's good to have. Good to have all in yeah. one place because we've been kind of fragmented on these things before. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so. It's what if I code shirtless? <laughs> hey, if you could pull it off, man, I would. If I could pull it off, I'd code shirtless too. I just can't do it. So. <laughs> Maybe if you're at home, that's acceptable. Yeah, exactly. I, I suggest not doing that in the office. Yeah. Yeah. I suggest exactly. This is not. A, this is not a good move in the office. <laughs> that's, that's the. That's, so. that's how you're gonna get fired. Um. Okay. So, this is a great comment from one. Uh, says I'm a web developer. They mostly pay to Google stuff. So. Oh my Google stuff every day, man. That's kind of Let's what we're talk gonna talk about, about that. today. That's literally our yeah. topic for today. That is a nice segue into our topic yeah. of the day. Uh, and our topic for the day, I entitled this video, Don't Steal Code, Borrow It. Yeah. So like, um, and this comes from when we teach a portfolio or we teach something and then or a project or whatever, and we'll say, hey, let's put a template on that. We get a lot of pushback. I'm like, no, why are you building templates? You need to build all the HTML, all the CSS from scratch. Like, you know, like right. you guys are cheating. cheating. Um, you know, yeah. And so like, and a lot of times we'll get a comment from students when we scaffold code from inside ASP.NET, it's scaffold views, it's scaffolds controllers. And they're like, yeah. do people do this normally? I mean, like, is this how they do it? This seems like cheating. It seems like you'd have to do all this by hand. I think, like, that's, the, I think that's the where the myth part comes yeah. in too, because people think yeah. like, oh, I can learn it this way. And that feels like cheating, but surely on the job, you don't do that, right? Yeah, what do you think Git co <laughs> GitHub Copilot does? <laughs> like, you know, so. Um, so what we want to do is like you can borrow things from code, but we don't want you to just outright just steal something. Right. So like there is a difference. Um, yeah. And then the also thing is you've got to understand like what you're borrowing. And so that integrates well. There's a lot of times you'll cut and paste something from Stack Overflow and you'll stick it in your code and you really don't know what you're doing. You just think that the question they're answering lines up with the problem that you're having. So 
Hey, Luke, what's up? Luke's giving us Luke's all kinds of bucks. About. What's he say? Just land on yes. my second C sharp job. Oh, awesome. That's awesome, Luke. Yes. Good bump in pay. Love it. All from watching yes, this YouTube channel. It. No, it's your work, Luke. You had to do the work. It's your work. Pull that back up. It's a, yeah. It's um, a, we play any small part in that. That's amazing. But that's you had to do the work. Face down in the gunner and my offspring. Wow. That's that's, that's, that's <laughs> hardcore right there. Oh, I cut, <laughs> cut the rest of the thing off, though. I don't know. Super yeah. Chat, cut the rest of it off. Um, but that's awesome. Uh, massive congratulations and thank you for the super chat but massive congratulations that's awesome yeah man that's awesome yeah onto, onto your second, second C-sharp job i love it yeah, i know man. you weren't enjoying the first one so you know um time to get on to the second one yeah i like it a, a good bump in pay to boot too so yeah sweet. awesome congrats congrats very very cool okay um so yeah we were talking about the difference between stealing and borrowing right so in my mind the difference right. between stealing and borrowing is borrowing is like you can we'll talk about the kind of things you can borrow but there's also this yeah. um um the, the stealing part where you can just copy something but you have no understanding about how it works because anybody can right. do that i can literally right steal a website right now i can copy it and steal it and be like that's my work until somebody right. asks me a question about it then i'm yeah we we've had students in the class like um go out and find a, a another student a previous student's work on github and then they pull it down and they yeah. try to pass it to us as their yeah. own like and so we we have to pull those students aside and say listen man like just because that you can get it to compile doesn't mean you understand it and just stealing that from someone else doesn't help you as a developer um so and we can ask you five or six questions and we can realize that's not your code um so what we try to do here at coder founder is we code along a lot but then we we give them specs and we say, hey, now implement this. Use this as a guide over here, but now make this new thing over here. So you can borrow from the previous project and push it in there. But now, you know, the models change, the, 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 the wordings change, the different things have changed. And so now that borrowing leads to understanding, in my opinion, instead of just, hey, this was on Stack Everflow. Let me just cut and paste this and stick it in there. And like, it doesn't compile. Like, I wonder what it is. You know, and so you need to understand what you're doing. Don't steal it. You know, exactly. so like exactly. you need to copy it. You so the kind of things it. you can borrow it. So some of the kind of things we're talking about here, we're talking about the usage of we get pushback on the usage of uh, like front end frameworks, right? That's that's right. people push back on that. Like you need bootstrap. to bootstrap especially. You need to code everything and understand everything in CSS before you can use bootstrap. Not true. No, not true. <laughs> I don't I still like I do transition some, but I'm not like a transition expert. I can't paint with CSS, you know, like I, I can't right. do that. Like, you know, but you know, I can pretty much solve any problem that I want to solve with the combination of bootstrap and an external style sheet. A lot of people think that just because you use bootstrap, therefore you don't use CSS. You can use right. them in conjunction. Um, we do that to a great deal inside the course when we build our portfolio sites, it's a lot of external style sheet and then a lot of bootstrap. So, yep. That, I mean, brings, but, that brings us to the next thing too, then, um, yeah. the use of templates. Yeah, I think you should use templates. Like we get so much pushback on this. Yeah. So much pushback. If you don't build it from scratch, yeah. like you, you're not, you a, you're, you're not a developer. You're, you're right? not That's real, the thing. You're, like, not you're not a real dev if you don't build it from scratch. Right. And so like, so what I think is what people don't understand is if you go work at enterprise and you're, you're tasked with say building an inventory control system, you know, and there's, it's a big long project they're probably not going to give you three or four weeks or two months to build the look and feel and to start from scratch what our CSS library is and what all that's going to be. It's just not going to happen. So like you can just download a template and get that part done and then move on, you know? So like, I think right. most templates today are customizable, you know? Um, and then I'll always say this about CSS. Like a lot of people rail against bootstrap, like, the people that make Twitter or Dom or whatever, you know, like, and they, they can't right. possibly understand the, the web, you know, even though a lot of people working on it and they're pretty, pretty smart, but you end up building a CSS framework. You know, even if you're, you're not like coding that behind for every single project, if you're at the company X, right. or you'd have <laughs> you a different, fr yeah, well, no, you just, you just end up with everything is different and it's, it, it becomes very <laughs> brittle. And so, at least with bootstrap or tailwind if you like it's predictable in what and how you do things instead of like 
okay, this way we're going to do, you know, we're going to lay out our templates this way. And this is how we push the footer to the bottom in this one. This other one's done differently. And this one's done differently. And the nav's different on this one. And like, there's just different ways of doing it. And so a framework allows you to make this more uniform for its code base, but give you the flexibility to make it look however you want. The thing that's laughable is that they say that you can't customize bootstrap, which you can. I mean, you really, really yeah, you can. can override everything in it. Everything can be overridden. <laughs> so like, you know, um, so I do like it it's a lot. Just, it's still just to this day. written CSS. That's all it is. It's all you know? it is. Of so. course you can, of course you can override it. It's cascading star sheets. You it's literally in the name. Like yeah. you can, yeah. like you, but you if you want to, it. you know, if you want to go make an accordion again by your own, go ahead, go for it. You know? Right. So, right. Um, um so we talk about, um, like, obviously um like front-end frameworks like uh um templates what about like um like just googling something and using a piece of code like a code snippet or something let's say well let's say even let's just take bootstrap for example right so there's some yeah. like the bootstrap documentation is super good like right it has like if you want to add a card to your website you can create it from scratch right you can just code it up and you can put all the classes in there yeah. and do whatever or you can just go copy it on the bootstrap documentation yeah so the two in. things i copy from the bootstrap documentation on a regular is modal code even though i can do it i just don't want to type it in and then card <laughs> code is sometimes it's a little more complex a little more typing yeah. and i'll save myself you know 15 minutes or whatever it's it your is, starting you know, point right just your starting point and then you modify it so we yeah. built a fantastic and in my opinion okay self self described <laughs> fantastic uh you know is the bootstrap snippets okay. and so like we we have this and we um roll this out to students day one in the in the self-paced course and sure, in the have it. but it's free you can do this this is vs is. code it is this is yeah Check so this, this is out. so this this is in vs code we made an extension um which um is uh where are we here uh bootstrap this one right five here snippets. Right? look at that five How snippets many demos now? uh 37 000. look at that just nice. 38 000, so that's kind of nice yeah, so um, if we add a new, I just add a new index, HTML here. And so this is a, the extensions installed here. So if I just type CF, uh, uh, you hit that uh, other way around, right? Other way BS around, right? BSCF, CF, sorry, yeah. BSCF. Dash. Let's do, there's a landing page one, right? I like the landing yeah, page. Yeah, landing page, Let's yeah. Let's do landing that. dark, I like that one. Boom, look at that. Boom. Bunch, bunch of pre-written code for me. And this yeah. is just a standing and point that if I run it, what we get? There, there we go. go. Look, Look at, at that. that. I got a pretty good starting point so now for a landing pretty page. Pretty good starting point. If you want to use our image for every website you ever make, you can. I would advise you to change it. But like, you know, you can do <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the style sheet that we generated. See, notice that we have bootstrap styles in up there. We have a, an inline custom yep. style sheet that made our backgrounds. With a nice little, so, convert this to external style sheet. Nope. Yeah, well. <laughs> it should be. Um, but yeah, um, so you should definitely use um, snippets if you can to start off and get you going. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, de I definitely think so. Definitely, definitely. So if you haven't downloaded that, go go download our extension too. We would yeah, if you're using um, Bootstrap, you know, it's kind of If cool. you're using Bootstrap, there's loads of cool stuff in there. There's like little component-like yeah. things you can put in there too. Yeah, um, it's not just overall. form, that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, it's kind of neat. yeah, there's loads of stuff in there to actually... Uh, Actually, it's not just full um full pages there's a bunch of other stuff you can do in there too so yeah um yeah cool um me my uh, thing here um but yeah the one thing that while you're looking at the comments there one thing that i that i just don't like i think it's just the advice that you have to build everything from scratch and i was on twitter this morning and um the guy's tweet I'm going to talk about, hopefully he's not watching. I'm not complaining about this over, but he was remarking on how he built an ORM 11 years ago. And like, he was basically oh, yeah. wish, looking back at that and wish he had it today because, you know, energy framework sucks, blah, 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 blah. And so like, and then, but what happens is you build things like ORMs and you build these things and they do work for your purpose. And then any framework has a larger purpose, but to say that that's better, just, it's kind of like saying, I'm going to build everything on my own. And so you can build, you could take a project and spend six months building the database access layer, or you could use Entity Framework or Dapper or something like that so that you can get it going. Something that's well-tested, well-used, and definitely well-documented that a lot of people know, or you could roll your own, you know? And so like, 
I think that's where the thing is people tend to want to write every single thing they have instead of focusing in on well, what am I trying to build? I'm trying to build an inventory control system, not an ORM. And you end up spending six months of the project working on just how to call, you know, a select statement. And it just seems like a waste of time on a lot of things at this point. Now, if you have a special edge case and like something you need to do, yeah, maybe it makes sense, you know, but you know, unless you're going to open source this or sell it or whatever, just use the stuff that's already built out there for you. And that way you can get, you can work on things that are completing things, delivering for the company you're working for or yourself, get that product out in the market and sell it. And so instead of focusing in on like, how do I make sure that my template is custom built or I'm going to build my own CSS framework, I'm going to build my own RM, you know, I'm going to build and you, and you never get around to building an actual product. Right. And that's, that's what I want people right. to avoid. Yep. Yep. You run yeah. off on all these tangents and you try solving problems that have already been solved. Yeah. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. Like use, yeah. use what's already out there, which brings yeah. me to my point that we were doing something yesterday. We we're doing something with our store yesterday. And I was like, ah, we need to change that. It doesn't quite look right. Like we had to change something yeah. in like the header. I was like, ah, it needs a shadow on it. So you were just like, Ah, go to this website and and grab one of the shadows. And like, uh, so we didn't even we didn't even, re, we didn't even write the CSS shadow. We just borrowed it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We literally borrowed it from here, right? We went to this website. Yeah. And we were like, yeah. ah, we kind of like uh, this one. So we're like, ah, let's yeah, use this. And I remember one. I said, you know, and I remember I said I knew it by number. I was like, I use sixty seven all the time. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, oh yeah, let's 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 go look at that one. I was just like, oh okay, yeah, let's. It was great. Like, oh yeah, it's just fuck shadow. And this website, you yeah. literally just copy it, you click it, copy it, and then you paste the CSS yeah. code in, and that's it. Yeah. And so, you know, and then shadows, um, box shadows in particular, can look a little bit complex, especially to get some of these results you want. And then here, it's great. I can go look at it and go, okay, I like that shadow. I like the way that yep. looks. Maybe that'll look good in my design. I copy it and put it in there. Yep. So code snippet, pretty simple. Exactly, um, exactly. And we literally build did this yesterday. Scratch. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, when it's, when you just, you just, sometimes you just, you just don't need to. That's the, you just don't need to. It's like, it's like just because you can yeah. do something doesn't mean that you should. Like you, you could do all of this stuff from scratch, and you, you know, you may do all of that, but you don't need to. I'm gonna put this. Um, I'm gonna try and put this link in um uh, chat here too. So Null Fighter was, is, put his latest his latest chat in there. He doesn't understand why we're not at 100k. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> we're trying, man. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that sub. Smash that like button. But that gives me a chance to talk about, hey, we got a contest. So like we could, we have a giveaway. We uh, do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so right, like, yeah. uh, the right there, this. if you, you could win a map way. book or a surface book, if they're just selling them by the time we get to 100K, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> we'll cut, we'll make it good on our promise. You know, like yep. there's a hey. VR headset, you know, if they still make them, I, you know, hopefully, uh, at, but th like, at, uh, at this point, the MacBook Air is an M2 MacBook. Yeah, it's been upgraded since we first put the yeah, thing out. Like you, get an, you get an yeah. M2 MacBook at this point. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But so, so tell yeah. your mom and your friends to like us and sub to us, and then um, we'll give away that that big prize package and plus a year, a year subscription. I think to Cutter Foundry, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yep. Um, so that's really cool. Yep, definitely. With lots of new content coming soon. Promise. I'm yep. not going to give you a date, but I'm saying it's really, really, really close. <laughs> um. So yeah. Super close. Um, so that's just, we're just finishing that up. So there's some yep. more .NET 6 content coming too. So yep. I will dangle that out there. <laughs> yeah. .NET 6 coming. Okay. Um, uh, I put that link if anybody's not used that, uh, CSS, uh, drop shadow or box, whatever you want to call it, uh, in chat. So yeah, it's good. Good stuff. Yeah. If you need, if, if, you, if you need a need drop one. box shadow. Yeah. My other favorite site is UI gradients. I use that a lot too. UI gradients. Yeah, I use that quite yeah. a bit. If you want another, yeah. another again, it just takes you a minute to, for the day. It takes you a minute yeah. to write out the code, doesn't it? It's like not like you yeah. can't do it. It just, it's just, it's, it's tedious. It's tedious yeah, to making, write it out. And in general, it's not like coding a gradient is easy. It's just like making that coded gradient look good. So you need to like, right? You know, so like you know, anyone can make a gradient, but like. Does it look good when you're done? And so UI gradients is great. You can say show all the presets and exactly. just pick one you that you here, like. You grab one and there's a button up here that says get CSS. It couldn't be any You can easier. move it. You can spin it too. So you can, if the spinner oh, right you can beside switch it, this. you can uh, oh, this like one. right there. there the you yeah, you can okay. rotate it yeah. around. Okay. Yeah, there it's you go. Cool. I'm like the corner. There you go. And then you just grab the code and you paste it in. Yeah. And you can this modify is... it if you want to from there. 
This is uh, yeah. uigradients.com. Yeah, I like it. Another yeah, tidbit great. for the day. You just randomly look through gradients too, which is great. You know, yeah. you, know what, you know what you're looking for. Just come here, look at a bunch of them, and you can go on this one. Oh, you can filter by color too on this one, right? So you can have like what yeah. colors predominant in it. So you that can, one in the middle there is terrible, like the Laurentium. I don't like that which, one. Which one? Oh, this one? That one. Laurentium. I don't like Laurentium. <laughs> Is it why? Is it too? Is it too purple? I don't know. Is that why? Uh, it's too purple. It's too it's purple. Too purple. I it's feel like purple. I feel like I don't know. I just feel I like don't know. there's too much yellow in some, it for me. Too, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, <laughs> enough of enough of UI gradients. Um. Okay. Um. Let's do some um. Uh, Northfire says, I feel, I feel most comfortable with Blazor. Uh, WebAssembly, should I make my portfolio with it so I don't take more time than necessary? Sure. Not sell me as when an interview since it doesn't include any JavaScript. Don't interview. I mean, if the, I mean, interview for a Blazor job. I mean, like, there's more and more Blazor. Um, there's going to be less of them, there. but that's going to be the issue. Yeah. Right? There's just less of them, yeah. so you're going to be more targeted. But if that's what you know, build it with that. But you yeah. are narrowing your field a little bit at this point in time. Yeah. That's the issue with it. Mm hmm. You can always, um, it doesn't mean that uh, they're going to look at how you built it. The portfolio is used to get you to the interview. Your projects on that portfolio are the things that you need to sell. So um, your portfolio can be built with Blazor. Um, and then you could make a project in using JavaScript or whatever you want to do. So. Oh, look, Alex is here too. It's like the whole gang's back. What's up, Alex? <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. What else we got? Uh, yeah. One says I'll say I will say steal the code, reverse engineer it, understand what is what the code's doing, and learn from it. Don't just steal it. That's it. That's exactly. exactly it. Don't cut and paste it, man. Like you know, just learn from it and use it. You know, especially if you can find it publicly on Stack Overflow or in GitHub or whatever. That's what Copilot's doing. Copilot's yeah. trying to help you write some additional code. It's just um, a good way to learn stuff too, isn't it? You can be like, oh, I see yeah. this example and here's the code and I can see what it did. Now, yeah. how, how did it do that? And trying to understand like which part of the code did what and trying to break that down yeah. is, is a great way to, to, to learn new things, definitely. Yeah. And for me, when I do that, they kind of stick better too in my mind. I don't know why versus yeah. just learning it from a textbook or something. Um, having seen yeah. the example and working it backwards from somebody not explaining it to me kind of helps. I think that's a, that's a good yeah. thing to have. makes it work. Yeah. Um, I didn't see this. Did you see this? Ben said there was a uh, an issue this this week on Twitter stealing plagiarizing documentation from JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> I did I didn't see this, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, which which <laughs> framework? Who is who is stealing whose documentation? That's sort of well, how could you steal documentation? The frameworks are different, right? That's why they. Made oh, them I wonder. Different. I wonder what that that actually was. I don't know what that. <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, you know, like, I think one thing that's a use case is if you want to make your own JavaScript framework, Kevin, I think, I think you should, I think you should open source it and sell it. But it seems like, cause people are changing the framework every week anyway, it seems like a good plan. A good, you, you, a good actually, plan. <laughs> you know what, bro? market saturation, you won't actually be the only one this week. There'll be, yeah, exactly. you'll yeah, be in competition, like competition with three, three others just launched just yeah. in the last three days. Like, yeah, like hashtag like, fresh js like we got to get to the fresh framework you know, the newest one you know and then I, there'll be a new framework a new js and i then feel like the every time new. i go look at like daily dev i feel like every day it's like new javascript framework i'm like really another one like I, <laughs> yeah, really? exactly i mean it's a joke you know. but it's like it's it's yeah. real <laughs> there are so many of these they keep things. making them <laughs> so, they, they yeah. do they definitely do keep making them yeah uh let me see here Mighty Mirth say, when it comes to code reuse, I often think the phrase standing on shoulders of giants is fitting. There you go. As yep, long as it's understood, safe, and references the source where appropriate. Yeah. You know, but like a template, definitely use a template if you're, especially if you're not designed, um, you're not a designer anyway, and you're not very good at that kind of thumb. It's not that you can't code it. It's like, will it look good when I'm done? Yeah. Um, and so there's a big difference between layout on how to lay out something and then designing something that looks really good so like um you know i think templates are a great place to start if you're going to put that on your to make your projects look great and reuse some code there 
Yeah, it is a no, different skill you know, set, right? The, the, yes. the, the designing part versus the kind of the coding part. They, they are different yeah. skill sets. I know we kind of we group them together a lot when we talk about full stack developers, right? We really do. Yeah. Um, right. But we see people either tend to lean kind of one way or the other. Even as a full stack dev, you either lean more towards being better at the design front end stuff or towards more the technical stuff at the back end. It's a real unicorn yeah. when you can get somebody who can do all the technical stuff and do it really well and has great design skills. You, you, you're yeah. like a killer at that point, but it's, that's not often the that's not often the mix. You don't often get that. You people lean one way or the other, so it's okay not to be good at the, the front end stuff and use a uh, um, a template because it demonstrates your back end skills. Plus, we know, as you've said many times, people are visual buyers and they will look at the front end regardless of how good your back end is. They yeah, I mean, can you imagine going decision. to interview say, "Hey, you know, I know my portfolio looks like crap, but I did make it from scratch." <laughs> Right. It's just not an excuse, is it? <laughs> the other guy comes in, this is my portfolio. Look at it. It looks great. You know, and they're like, did you make it from scratch? Now I use the template, but you know, it looks good. So right. like, which one's going to win out? The one that implemented the crappy solution or the one that implemented the great solution? And so they're always going to win on the great solution. So um, they're always going to win. Right. Uh, Ridge Brady says, uh, Bobby.js, the framework <laughs> of your gradients. <laughs> hey, maybe there's something in that. <laughs> Maybe there's something in there. But hold on, almost all UI gradients because we don't like that one. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we can't use the Lawrence Lawrence Indium, So almost all UI so. gradients. Um, <laughs> let me see. Dominic wants to know opinion on Entity versus Dapper. I we we teach Entity. Um, there's nothing wrong with Dapper. Dapper is more lighter weight. It allows you to write direct SQL. Entity is more like going against entities, which is gives you one advantage uh, other than that you can write code against objects and versus directly the database. Um, so writing code against objects can be an advantage in some cases where maybe the object doesn't come from a database. So you can still sort it and filter it and look at it and retrieve it. Um, Entity framework is well tested and well done. So is Dapper. Use the one that you'd like um, in that case. Um, if you have a use where I need to write some direct SQL, then maybe Dapper is more appropriate for you. It is smaller and lighter. I think either one works. We've used Dapper at, at all stages of Code of Founder. We just used to teach both, and now we've just got to simplify what we're doing um, so that we can teach more things instead of like worrying about the ORM, we're going to use Entity Framework. You know, that's what we do. But, but they've been proven the speed and the performance. There was performance issues with EF before, and they're trying to make those queries run quicker. So. And if you do have problems, you still can write store procedures and call them through EF. I mean, it's not like you can't do it. So, I don't know. However you want to do it. Uh, here's Scott's take on stealing or borrowing. The rule he follows, if I can't explain it, I don't use it. That's kind of true, except for the cases, a lot of packages we use. Like, there's no way we could explain EF for every single thing down there. We, should, we shouldn't. Therefore, I'm going to write an ORM. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing with like Newsoft, JSON, right. and like those kind of things that we all just use by default. There's a lot right. of things that we use. Um, but hey, there's a lot of things that I would use. Like if I see a cool border with some animations in it, and it's like, ooh, I want that spinny border and gradient animation on my thing. <laughs> Please don't do that. I could take the time to go, like, what does it do? Like, how are they doing that? And really dive into it, or I would just use it. So I think, Scott, that's a good rule in general like what does it do um and then you don't know or then they don't use it but if you yeah. can't yeah well there it. are some I, things I that are intentionally saying. built as black boxes right yeah they're they intentionally are. built yeah, to be a black box are. you feed something in and you get something out of it you don't necessarily yeah. have to understand how that works on that yeah. kind of level it's kind of like your computer right you don't have to understand but you can how the but i think scott would use it. i think scott would say i'm gonna put words in his mouth he'd say yeah but i understand what the black black, black blocks is doing not necessarily Every line of code or how right, they wrote it, but right? Like, and I think I, and I think that's the difference. I think that's yes. what he's saying, I th right? And yeah. I think that is the that that is the kind of the key differentiator. Understanding what it, exactly, understanding like when I give it this, I'm expecting this back is different than saying yeah. when I give it this, I know it's going to go through this algorithm, do this thing, and do this thing, and then and then it's going to give me this thing back. All I have to know is yeah. what I'm putting in. I know what I should be expecting back out. Um, yeah. Understanding how that part works is important, definitely. It's a ton of open source libraries that we have, and a lot of things we use in. You know, for us in the .NET world, new Git packages, but you have the same thing with other package managers that you use because it's pre-built. So. Right, right. 
right? And those things, again, you're understanding what your expectation is from it. You don't exactly understand how it's written. Like, you probably couldn't write some of those things, or create them, um, mm -hmm. but you're leveraging them. Yeah. Um, okay. Fernando here says, I'm building my portfolio and I'm still paranoid by borrowing, <laughs> but most of my time is spent trying to understand the code more than typing it. So that's fine. I mean, like if you're going for a front end job and that's where you're going to go, then you do need to understand like what you're doing. If, you, if you're going for a full stat position, stick a template on it. Um, and then, but you can still understand like heading sections. You still have to modify that template. Still got to cut you that know, template to, in, don't you? You've still yeah, got to yeah, do you've still got to cut it in and like change it. You're not going to use the whole thing. If you look at templates, they have like 45, 500 pages in it. <laughs> so you're going to use like seven, you know. So like you got to know kind of what you're doing anyway, just to do it. Um, so, but you know, in the learning process, sometimes we get hung up on things like HTML and CSS in the beginning, and we spend nine months there. And we're trying to get a full stack web dev job we should spend more time in the coding aspect of it unless you're trying to be just a designer which is fine i mean it depends on what your goals are so that's why i'd say learning to code you need to know what you're trying to build and then start from there instead of like i'm going to learn to code with no clear outcome or direction or end goal of what i want to do is it build mobile okay if it's building mobile you probably don't need to learn html at this point you know i mean we, that's not where we start you know we start somewhere else if you're building websites, yeah, we need to start with HTML and build things like that. So if you're looking at embedded or games, yeah, you wouldn't build it, you know. Heck, if you're a game designer and you want to learn a game, I would say build it with Wix or Squarespace. You don't need to understand HTML at this point. Right. You know? um, but right. if you're a web developer, yeah, build your own portfolio in HTML and get it pushed to Netlify or something like that. Okay, Mighty so, Mirth says there are only a few cases where Microsoft has used Xamarin for their apps in the past. Quite a few are in React. Could Maui change this? He'd love them to see, I guess, be, eat more of their dog food. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, so they built a tool for Xamarin and they didn't use it for everything. So, sure, should they? So, here's what, after talking to several people at work at Microsoft, I think this is what you need to understand about Microsoft and probably every large company on the face of the planet. Imagine yeah, that Microsoft, at Facebook, everything's not built in React. I mean, I'm sure they're using .NET in some cases and they're using .NET at Amazon. So like they're using the right tool for the job, but each individual department are like little mini corporations. So they that, that person is making the design choice that they have to make at that point. And so does that mean they could have used Xamarin for it? Absolutely. But they didn't, so they used something else. Maybe that was the skill set that was native to that little part of the world of, of Microsoft. Now, Microsoft could come out and say, you must use Xamarin for everything. And they're like, well, our skill set didn't like that in, in the finance department. So right. um, I think they made the right choices in a lot of cases. Now, I think Maui could change this. They could be the best tool always. We'll just have to see how they do it. Now, Maui is the next iteration of Xamarin. So we'll see what happens there and see kind of where they go with it. So. But yeah, I mean, they do eat their own dog food. That that quote comes from Bill Gates. <laughs> eat your own dog food. It comes from Bill Gates. I mean, yeah. he's the one that I think coined that pattern or that word, or at least made it famous. I'm sure someone may have said it before he did. But like, yeah, maybe I don't do know. But I, the quote that that I'm familiar yeah. with is the Bill Gates one too. Yeah, I don't know if he. Yeah, it, and Xamarin was a purchased product from you know, people don't understand Microsoft purchased Xamarin, and now they're just now getting to the fact where they get it to where they want it to be. And it takes a lot of time and investment and money. And um, I think they have big plans for Maui. Um, it's pretty cool. It just came out though. So like we need to see kind of what, how far it's going to go. I mean, literally like last month it was released. So yeah, it's like it was really, really new. Within weeks. It's, uh, yeah. So now, .NET so. 7 is the Maui release is what I'm calling it. So like that's kind of the, one of the main things they're talking about. So. Right. Right. And uh, Luke's super excited for Maui. So Luke's in a position nice. where like Maui's yeah. something, he's on his second C-sharp uh, job, yeah. like Maui's something yeah. to look at, for sure. Yeah. I'm excited for two things. Maui Blazor, I think um, next year, as we go through .NET 7 release, you'll see, and I've seen a lot of talk on Blazor on Twitter just in the recent few months. Maybe that's just my feed, but my feed wasn't like that a year ago. And so like a lot okay. of people are, are experimenting and using that. And I, I do think there's some use cases where 
Blazor is superior. You know, I know Tech Rally said, "Hey, JavaScript's still here," just you know, because we made that video. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we, you know, we need to remake that video again, just saying that it's there. Yeah, again. we need to keep Let's making just, it. You know, like so you can make fun of me. That's 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 that's, <laughs> that's my goal. Oh, that's funny. So. I like it. Uh, he says Bobby NPM already exists, and <laughs> and that it was actually <clears throat> ten years ago. So it's like the right time yeah. for you. So do you did you do that? Is that is that you? Did you own that? Did you claim? I, that? I'm, yeah, no, I didn't make NPM. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I don't know if some somebody else is trying to uh, get on your. Uh, we use like I was saying that we use NuGet here in the .NET world. That's what they call the package manager right. here. But like yeah, NPM right. obviously in the JavaScript world. Um. Let's see here. Mighty Mercer. Same here, Luke. The Blazor hybrid feature especially really maximizes reuse. It's kind of cool what they're doing. I mean, I'm just telling you, um, it could take off. I like, we'll see. But um, it's definitely something you need to look at if you're already coding. If you're already doing it, you need to look into it. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Is that, would yeah. that be your like, oh, super chat. Uh, thank you, Miguel. I'll come to yours in one second. Is that the kind of thing then? So if you were thinking like, if you're already in a job right now, what are the things that you would be looking at? Is that one of them? Uh, what's that now? If I was is that, starting is that one today? Of them? If you, no, if you were like, if you were in in Luke's shoes right now, you're on your second job, you're pretty, yeah, you know, you're pretty yeah, comfortable at this point. At you're into it. It's, it's Blazor that you look at? Okay. Yes, I would look at it. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. That's my position on Blazor. It's not the job today, but it could be next year. And then if something big springs up and, you know, and you just have a chance to make a lot of money because you happen to know Blazor really well. So well, look at that super chat. That's interesting. His, the guy was saying. <laughs> hey, I swear this isn't a plan. And somebody sometimes. It's not a plan. Say, Miguel, you know? <laughs> Miguel we, we get this kind of thing all the time. And it's like people don't, they don't believe us sometimes. I swear people no, no. don't believe us this happens. They're like, oh, I learned this framework and I go to get a job and guess what they're using? Damn .NET. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they think we plant this thing, I swear. <laughs> they think like, yeah. it's just not true. No, it, like it is true. We see so it a lot. We're, we're, I, one of the predictions I will make right here is like, I do believe Web API on .NET 6 and .NET 7 is definitely a thing. Like that is definitely going to be very, the performance is undeniable. The C sharp language, you can find millions of people to write code, or maybe not millions, but hundreds of thousands of people to write C sharp code. Um, so I, I do think those two things have made Web API yeah, very, very kind of, it's like you got to look at it, especially if you're doing thing, anything at scale. Now, are there other technologies out there? Of course there are. Then the front end can be built with whatever you want at that point. And so, you know, it's great. I mean, once it goes to scale, you've got to use something like C Sharp, in my opinion, on the back end. You just have to. And so that's where the big companies and that's where you get paid. And that's that's what happens. So um, does that mean Google writes everything in Web API? No, they have their own kind of thing that they're they're writing. And so Microsoft has their thing. And these are competing technologies, but they do cross over quite a bit. Both companies are using a lot of different things. But I do think Microsoft has really put the heat on writing performance, really performant web APIs or RESTful services on the back end is, it's really compelling. I mean, like, it's kind of cool. So, but yeah, you want to learn, you can come to .NET, you can come to take the self paced course, shameless plug, you know. Yeah, go right up here, look. Learn you can go to learn.cutter foundry and that's, we'll teach you how to use um, MVC. Um, and at least you'll learn C sharp and the .NET framework from there. So yep. try it out, Mike. Miguel. And uh, links but, in the description. I'm glad you got a first job, man. I mean, it's awesome, man. Yeah, it is awesome. That yep. is awesome. Um, let's see. The Java's Paul says, Java's going to say it would never <laughs> die. Never say never, Paul. Never, Paul, never is a long time. You know, the, you know, there was, a, you know the, there was a caveman walking around at one point. And he's like, man, where did you know? We're, we're, All I'm saying is, it's like, I've never said it was going to die today or this week. But what, what I am saying is, just look at Flash. I mean, you have to understand, you have to be old enough like me to understand how dominant Flash was. Like it was dominant, like, oh, yeah. like everything was built. And then overnight it was gone because why? The browser said, yeah, we don't want Flash in the, we don't want plugins technology in there. So Silverlight, Flash and those types of things gone, gone away. And it was just happened really, really quickly and people transitioned to what you see today, which is JavaScript and, you know, still have multi-page apps like ASP.NET. So like now I think that Blazor or WASM in general is that next shift that we're seeing. And this is the, the point of that video is like, 
you got to see these shifts coming so that you're better prepared for it. So if you're coding right now, just take a look, just take a look at it. You know, there's like do a quick tutorial, just see what it's about. You know, will someone else build a, a WASM implementation? Guaranteed. Someone else is going to do, do it yeah. as well. It's just that when you look at the landscape right now today, as I sit here in 2022, that Blazor is far away the best WASM implementation right now to build applications with. So it's, more tooling it's ready to go and, uh, and they're investing a lot of time in it so oh what do you well, think Josh about this? Die next week i'm sure yeah. he's joking about this but what do you, what do you think about this <laughs> still be using it even after it's dead we've seen people literally die on a hill with technologies Paul. don't yes, be that guy man. don't be the flash yeah. guy who no, doesn't no, no, no. who refuses to, to not learn something else Here, here's here's really what happened coding after 30 is really what you need to understand paul is like Flash wasn't necessarily killed by Apple. The browser vendors, Microsoft and everyone else, came together, the consortium said, we don't want plugins in a browser. Apple did come out and say, we'll never run Flash on a phone. They didn't like it, okay? And so like between 50% of your marketplace at that time when they did it was on a phone and they owned the dominant phone platform. Apple had a say in that, but so did Microsoft and so did Google and so did all the other people said- Because everybody else could have just want... said, we'll keep it. Yeah. I mean, Apple we'll did run... it because it killed the battery on the phone. Right, that's right. why it killed yeah. the battery on the phone. So they're like, we can't do this. We can't have this giant screen and have this flash thing running because our phone's going to last like two hours and no one's going to buy one. And they, they want to name apps in their app store. I mean, like, <laughs> let's be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, so it doesn't matter why it gets killed. Like, and so that's what people don't understand. It could be political. Like Apple said, hey, we want these games to be in the app store and we want that money. It could be that. Um, it could be the battery life or whatever. But like, I can tell you the consortium that came together that makes the browsers, the WC3, which is consists of Microsoft, Google, and all the Amazon and all those guys. I don't know if Amazon's on it, but like all of these people are saying, we need another language in the browser. That language is WebAssembly. That's all I'm saying. And like when they make a, you have to notice that when they make a language and they say, this is the new thing that we're gonna put in, it may get adopted, it may not, but like odds are it's gonna, JavaScript will look like Flash one day is that 10 <laughs> years from now i don't know maybe i'll be retired when it comes when it happens maybe. i hope i'm retired in 10 years but like maybe <laughs> but i'll come back on this youtube channel as an old man i told you hold on here's uh <laughs> his, his text where he's likening your js to be dead the same as max <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good i like it that's funny. except he said this year max Kellerman said it's gonna happen this year which was like six years ago you know like it's gonna happen yeah. you know yeah yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. There's, there's going to be a day when he's not good, right? I mean, that's... You know, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it, has, it has to come eventually, right? It has to. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> that's funny. Um, oh. No, I don't think so. I, I, a lot of people think they are. I don't think they are. I mean, I you know, you weird. work for know Amazon. Amazon's bad. evil, too. I mean, if Microsoft's evil, so is Amazon. So, like, I mean, you know, like, these big companies aren't evil. They're, they're there to make money. That's what they do. Yeah, that is so funny. You, you see look this at, thing where these yeah. big companies are just like looked down upon um, for being evil right. or whatever. And it's because joke, but... for whatever reason, people want to hate Windows and some of us deserve, you know, Windows Bob mistake, Windows 98 me, <laughs> you know, like, you know, there's some bad <laughs> releases in there, you know, like, you know, but then Windows 95 stayed around for like 30 years past its prime. I mean, it was forever when people were yeah. using that thing. So like, yep. um, you know, in fact, I had a um, true story you laugh about this. I was, I'm getting my alarm replaced in the company, you know, because we can't change the car pass system. There's a little controller board up there and you have to log into it to change cards. Well, it doesn't run in any modern browser period. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. All of them. So the, the, the tech comes in and says, you know, this doesn't run in your browser. And I'm like, that's why I'm telling you, I need you to replace it because yeah. he says, have you tried opera? I said, I've tried opera, fire, fire. I've tried them all. It doesn't run in it, man. Like, I know what I'm talking about. Just please change it. And he goes, and so then he had a problem. He couldn't change it. And, and you know what his solution was? He says, do you have a machine with XP on it? We could run it with IE6. I'm wow. like, get out of here, man. Like, just wow. get out of here. Hold on, get out of here. This is I want a building, new one. This is for building <laughs> security. Like, I know, I want a new one. I don't want to use XP. You know, like who has Windows XP? Like, man. So. I remember, for, so there's a thing. I remember seeing a story not too long back about ATMs running XP. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's so, I'm like, really? The ATMs are still running Windows XP? 
It's like it's one of those yeah. things, isn't it? When you, these larger companies they get stuck in these ruts, these things, and like if it works, don't break it. Like don't fix it, don't do anything to it. Just if it works don't until the day it. it dies, do not touch it. Like do nothing to it, and then you realize it's a massive security hole like years down the line when right. when you're literally your OS is vulnerable. Yeah, and that's the problem with JavaScript. There's just some things with it that 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 are problematic. Doesn't mean you can't work around them. Doesn't mean you can't change it. It's just the consortium saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice if, and they, they laid down all the ifs, and the, at the end of that answer, that if statement was wasm. Like, what if we did this? And it's going to take a few years. I mean, it will to, to get this fully adopted and get the ecosystem all built out. And But when it does, it'll change. It will, you know, and they're like, you know, and you'll see that first change when they stop supporting React one day, you know, like you'll say, because they roll out a wasm framework. It'll happen. Right, right. So what do you think about this? Uh, and it's talking about Microsoft sort of hedging their bets on having TypeScript. You can bet on things simultaneously. They're big right. enough to do it. Um, they wanted to make JavaScript better, so they did. I mean, that's, that's like, they're looking at the now, and then I'm saying, I'm looking at the future. Let's just, I'm just saying, pay attention, you know? Um, I can imagine back in, you know, people were riding horses to work right when Ford met a car. And I'm like, that's never going to well, happen. That's will. never going to happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're, 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 in, we're in auto change right now between electric and gas. Yeah. There will be a time, yes. probably in our lifetimes, we'll be like, man, we used to have to go put gas in our cars. <laughs> like, yeah, that was insane. Exactly. We had to go away somewhere yeah. and like, put this like fossil fuel in our car. Like this yeah, liquid. we're going to look at like so iRobot, you know, when Will Smith had the motorcycle and she says, did you put gas in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to happen. So, we're, in, we're in that change. So I think Microsoft time. makes bets all over the place. I mean, they're making bets in the cloud environment. They're making bets on JavaScript and TypeScript. They're making bets with Blazor. They're making bets with Web API. They can afford to do it. They're one of the largest companies in the world. So um, they're just trying to help developers build things. So TypeScript is kind of cool. I mean, like it's somewhat cool. Still, it is a layer on top of something that's not type safe to begin with. That's what Wasm's saying. Hey, what if we ran type safe languages in the browser? What if what if we could could do that? Because we can't do that with JavaScript without some rigmarole and some things like TypeScript to put on top. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's at the end of the day, it's not type safe. You can call it TypeScript all you want. So uh, let's see. Peacemaker here says I'm in my senior year right now with only two semesters left. That's awesome. Um, I just started doing C Sharp. I don't know why I feel so excited about it. <laughs> it's awesome. I don't know either. You're, you're, not, like, you're, you know, you're not on the wrong road. You're not wrong. I mean, like, yeah. I think you should learn to get a job in this marketplace. A back end language is, is something that you should do. That's going to give you the most advanced new career in web dev. That's Java, that's C Sharp, and that can be JavaScript with Node. I mean, there's. The three of them. Um, the other ones are lesser used. You can look at other things out there, but like those are the three big ones. And so learning a server side language is fantastic for your career, whether that be Java or C Sharp or JavaScript with Node. But when you start looking at RESTful services in enterprise, man, C Sharp is really compelling. You know, put it on the back end. And it seems like coming out of school, if you can pick that up too, it seems like most um, programs really aren't good. teaching that, right? They're teaching yeah. Python because it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> I guess. I mean, like, yeah, I don't know if it's any that's, easier, but like, that's the one they pick. That's what I we think hear that all the time. Primarily because they're using that in the day science realm, and like, that's what they're using on the on their daily, and so they teach that. And I get that. You know, I understand that why you would do it. So. We've, seen colleges, data we've seen colleges make their choices based on what the instructor knows. We've right, seen that sure. in the past. It'd be yeah. like, oh, the instructor knows how to do this language. Therefore, we're going to teach that language. It's like, whoa. Yeah, that's why at that community really college, you can, take a, you can take a VB course, which you shouldn't. I mean, like, you know, it's like, like right. why, are we why are you teaching VB? Well, that's what I know. Like, well, learn something new, dude. Like, you know, so, um, you know, it's two, again, just so that um, I'm not biased totally. I just like, I don't think you should learn VB.net at this point, even though it's a .NET language. It's not, it's not the that's one, not the one you should learn. C Sharp, yeah. for sure. Yep. Um, let's see, what's James saying? James says, with the ton of front-end JS frameworks, ton is an understatement. Uh, does the framework you learn really matter between React or Vue? Yeah, it does matter in this regard. If you go show a Vue site that's built totally in Vue to an interview for a job and they're using React, and then someone comes along behind you in interviews and their stuff's in React, they're gonna pick the React guy. 
because you they already know that you don't have to translate that. So bid it with whatever you want is 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 advice that I think isn't exactly the best advice, whatever. You can build it with whatever you want, but then interview for the jobs that have that framework implemented. I think it's a better choice of action. So I like Vue, I think it's cool. I mean, I would like to build content here at Coder Foundry with, with Vue as our front end and our web API on the back end. I think that's could be cool. React probably is more popular though. Yeah, we just know that React's more popular. Yeah. So at least in it our is. market, it definitely is. It seems it to is, me that's definitely. the common thing across the, yeah. across everywhere is. And there are a ton of JF, front end JS frameworks out there. There's only Angular, React, and Vue, though. There's the three big ones out there. There's yeah, some when you other talk about getting are, a job, those are the ones that are going to get you hired. You can, yeah. So if you're Vue, try to find some Vue jobs. There'll be less. If you're React, try to find some React jobs. And if you're Angular, try to get some Angular jobs. That's if you're trying to break in. If you already got five years experience under your belt, then you can easily parlay Vue into a React job. But that first job, it makes it hard. And that's kind of where we're, our advice stems from. The person out there interviewing that's never had a job before and they project into you, can this person code? And they're looking at your portfolio and it goes, ah, oh, it's written in Vue, we do React here. Can you learn this? Sure, and then they got to project into that. Five years? You know, like I've learned 16 frameworks, you know, I'm good, you know, and then they're like, okay, that's neat that you did that view. We do react here. Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. I got you. And, and it's easier for them to project into someone with experience versus no experience. So first experience, align your learning with the jobs that you're going to interview. Just the best advice I have on that. Um, oh, thanks for swinging by. We appreciate it. Yeah, man. You stay awesome, man. Spending your, your lunch with us. <laughs> We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to Paul's channel, go subscribe. Go look up Coding After yeah. Thirty. He's on yeah. there live a bunch doing stuff with Strappy and um, yeah. doing some other stuff on there. But he's live coding a bunch of stuff and yeah, answering your questions and whatever. So yeah, go go check out his channel if you haven't already. Good stuff. Um. Okay, so Peacemaker says that. Thank you. I met you doing server side programming in C Sharp. Nice. Yep. I like it. You on cool. the right path. That's actually great coming out of your college. Usually it's console where they teach it as console apps. <laughs> right. And that's, you know, so now you, if you're doing a web API or some kind of MVC or something like that, it's kind of cool. It's really great. Um, well, Stefan, so what are the things you recommend learning before taking your .NET self-paced course? Um, well, we start with HTML and like we look at Bootstrap, JavaScript. You can do all that stuff in there as well. If you don't know anything whatsoever, we recommend doing that part first and then move into .NET because we're building websites with .NET. So like you need to understand like web pages and some CSS and some JavaScript, it helps you a lot. And if you've never coded for our JavaScript stuff is just about learning what an if statement is, a for loop, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Obviously the more you know about kind of the front end stuff coming in, the easier it will be to pick up, but some of it will be yeah. fresh for you. But we do you, have but, all know, that front end stuff there. It. I mean, yeah, yeah. Cover it it's all, all there. So. Oh, look, he sent us some hearts, <laughs> um, which actually showed up. I'm actually surprised they showed up in here. Normally the emojis oh, nice. don't show up in here. I don't know why maybe they showed they up this it. time. Maybe they maybe, fixed it. Maybe they did fix it. Emojis normally show up as like those words. They just show up as words with the thing yeah. around them. Like they just don't work correctly. So, cool. um, let's do one last thing here. James wants to know, do you think Blazor will overtake MVC at some point? I don't know. I mean, um, we'll see how dominant WebAssembly does. I mean, so MVC in general, whether that be React, or not React, but Ruby, you know, Spring Boot MVC or ASP.NET MVC allows you to build multi-page apps, okay? Blazor is going to be more of a competitor to React and Angular where you're building a single page app, a spa. And so they're two different things. And I do think that there is a case to be made that MPA should be built all the time for like non-client facing apps. It's just easier to build. But then even with Front end apps, you know, like the SEO is a lot better uh, with if you have multi pages sticking out there that just kind of render. So I don't know, whatever you, um, I don't know, I will see. I think um, right now we're teach still teaching NBC because it's valuable. And we may, if we see Blazor really taking over the market share, then we'll start teaching Blazor. That's always what we've said about Coder Foundry. Like we're going to teach what gets you a job, not necessarily what we like. Um, so, and I tend to like things that get people jobs. So, <laughs> right. So, 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 we're, so, so we end up being aligned anyway. 
Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but you do make decisions around things sometimes. You'd be like, wow, that's yeah. cool. Be like, yeah, but no, but like, we're not going to teach that yet because it's too, it's too cutting niche. edge or it's not established yet. It's too niche. Like it doesn't yeah. actually, does it help somebody when they go for an interview and get a job? No. So therefore we just choose not to teach. Yeah. You do make those decisions. Like, yeah. But like you said, you've always said, like if tomorrow Microsoft decided not to support .NET and C Sharp anymore for whatever reason, or it jumped off a cliff, we'd be we'd be teaching something else. Teaching <laughs> something else, you know, and like that's what we do. We want to we want people to get jobs. I mean, so we have our way of doing it, which we know is not the only way. So if you want to uh, do it a different way, we're we're supportive of that. We just want to see you get yeah, a job. Definitely. So our advice holds true: build a portfolio, build some really cool projects, align your projects with the type of company that you're interviewing for, show that project, talk about it, and get a job. Whether that be in React or JavaScript. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a zealot about it. I'm just saying this is how we do it yep. and it works, but there's other ways to get there too. I'll just leave this yeah. comment before we leave, before somebody yeah. writes this comment at the bottom. This has been a one hour yeah. ad for a boot camp, So you all know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did get accused of that on, on another one of our videos. Yeah, I was like, a, really? It's a one hour like, ad for our I was boot like, camp. I was like, did we even mention we were a boot camp in that video? Like, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know, but hey, that's just how it is. You know, some people don't like free advice, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, you can't. Oh, cool. um, let's wrap it up. Let's go get tacos. Thank you for the let's super chats today. Taco Everybody. Thursday. We can afford tacos today. Thanks to we Luke. Can. Luke, thank you. Yeah. Miguel, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and All congrats right. again, Luke, on the job. Great stuff. Yep. Love it. All right. Good luck, guys. Keep cutting. We'll see you next week. Yes, later.